Hello, and welcome to the first presentation in the tutorial series, Strategies for Success, Supporting Deaf Plus Learners. My name is Brenda Fawcett, and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Alberta. I began my career at the British Columbia School for the Deaf in Burnaby, BC, where I taught deaf students who were diagnosed with additional disabilities such as autism, Down syndrome, and cerebral palsy. In addition to my work as a teacher, I've worked as a behavior consultant in home, school, and community settings, providing support to parents and teachers of individuals with developmental disabilities, both deaf and hearing. Deaf plus learners are those students who are both deaf and have one or more additional disabilities. In this session, I will provide some general information regarding deaf plus learners, their needs, and the needs of their families and teachers. For the purpose of this tutorial series, when I speak about deaf plus learners, I'm referring to students who have a severe to profound hearing loss and one or more educationally significant disabilities. While hard of hearing children can also be diagnosed with additional disabilities, data suggest it is those students with severe to profound hearing loss who are more frequently diagnosed with a comorbid disorder. Many of the strategies I will be speaking of throughout this series can also be applied to hard of hearing students with additional disabilities. However, my focus will be on those students who, due to their deafness, do not use speech as their primary mode of communication. It is important to understand that these students do not have access to spoken language in their environment and thus require communication to occur via the visual modality. It is important to note that the majority of these children are born to hearing parents. This means that from birth, they do not have access to language input. Even after they are identified as being deaf, their hearing parents are likely to experience challenges communicating effectively with them. Deaf children may be diagnosed with one or more disabilities that affect their development. They may be diagnosed with autism or Down syndrome. They might be identified as having a cognitive impairment or intellectual disability. They might have fetal alcohol spectrum disorder or cerebral palsy. These are examples of educationally significant disabilities that impact a child's ability to learn in a typical manner. Certainly, deaf or hard of hearing children may have any type of disability or disorder, including attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, a learning disability, or an anxiety disorder. For the purposes of this tutorial series, we will be focusing on those students who have more significant developmental disabilities. The effects of additional developmental disabilities permeate multiple areas of development, including communication and language, mobility, learning, and the development of self-help skills, and can interfere with independent functioning, particularly as children progress to adulthood. The development of problem behavior is a particular concern. Because deaf plus children are typically challenged in terms of communication skills, they may develop problem behaviors. For them, problem behaviors serve to communicate. We will look at this issue of problem behavior and how to address it in an upcoming module. Professionals in the field of deaf education are becoming increasingly concerned regarding deaf plus students. Over the past several years, studies have demonstrated that a significant proportion of deaf and hard of hearing students have educationally significant disabilities. In most cases, the prevalence of developmental disabilities is higher in deaf and hard of hearing children than in children who are hearing, however estimates vary widely. A number of studies and surveys have identified that between 25 and 51 percent of school-aged deaf or hard of hearing students have at least one educationally significant disability. Even though studies and surveys show that a high proportion of deaf or hard of hearing students have additional disabilities, it has been suggested that these are underestimations. The Gallaudet Research Institute in particular conducts an annual survey of deaf or hard of hearing children being served in programs for the deaf. It does not include those children being served in other educational environments, such as hearing schools. It is believed that there are many more deaf plus students being served outside of programs for the deaf or hard of hearing. As such, it is likely that the proportion of deaf plus students is even higher than currently documented. When we look at conditions associated with deafness and developmental disabilities, we see that there are many. Prenatal and perinatal injury can result in damage to areas of brains responsible for hearing and overall development. Rubella has long been associated with hearing loss, vision impairment, and intellectual disability. Children can also be born with central nervous system damage or dysfunction that interferes with both hearing and overall development. There are some specific conditions that are known to cause deafness and are also known to be associated with developmental disability. Cytomegalovirus, or CMV, is commonly associated with hearing loss, 
vision impairment, and intellectual disability. Some research has suggested that CMV may be associated with autism. Children who are born prematurely are more likely to experience hearing loss and other developmental challenges. Finally, children who can contract meningitis may be left with significant challenges. As well, there are two syndromes associated with deafness, Down syndrome and Charge syndrome. Both of these conditions are commonly associated with developmental disability and varying degrees of hearing loss. There are many other etiologies associated both with deafness and developmental disability, however these are among the most common. Of course, there are also cases where it is difficult, if not impossible, to identify the specific cause or causes that result in a child being deaf plus. In recent years, as for hearing children, the incidence of autism in deaf and hard of hearing children has garnered much interest. Numerous studies have sought to determine the prevalence of autism in deaf populations and the prevalence of deafness in children with autism. Results from these studies suggest that the incidence of autism in deaf and hard of hearing children is greater than in hearing children. Most recently, Christian Szymanski and colleagues analyzed data from the 2009-2010 annual survey of deaf and hard of hearing children and youth and found that the prevalence of autism in that sample of deaf and hard of hearing students was 1 in 59. When compared to prevalence estimates for autism in hearing children, currently identified as 1 in 88 by the United States Center for Disease Control, it is clear that there is a greater incidence of autism in deaf and hard of hearing children. It's clear that the incidence of educationally significant developmental disabilities in deaf students is high. As well, more and more deaf plus students are being included in schools and programs for the deaf. This means that teachers of the deaf and other relevant professionals require education and training to address the unique needs of deaf plus learners. It is critical that educators are able to employ evidence-based practices to support the development of communication and language skills. Educators also need to be well versed in evidence-based practices for assessing problem behavior, developing effective interventions, and supporting the implementation of those interventions. It is also important that educators are skilled in the use of evidence-based instructional strategies to facilitate the development of self-help, daily living, academic, social, and employment skills of deaf plus learners. It is also important to recognize the needs of parents. Parents of deaf plus children have historically been in a difficult position. When looking for professional assistance to address the needs of their deaf plus child, parents have few resources. When they approach professionals with expertise in deaf education, they are often told that their child's primary disability is not deafness, that they should access services related to the developmental disability, be that autism, Down syndrome, or such. When they approach professionals <clears throat> with expertise in their child's specific developmental disability, they often find that the communication needs of their child are not addressed because those professionals don't understand the needs of a deaf child. Catherine Beals, parent of a deaf son with autism, wrote in 2004, Neither the deaf intervention nor the autism intervention systems prove perfectly sensitive to our needs. When reflecting upon her experience trying to find an educational placement where professionals had sufficient expertise to address all of her son's needs. Kathy Ben, another parent to a deaf son with autism, described her experience in this way. Jesse's days were split between a school for deaf students and a self-contained special education classroom within a general education public school. The split was due in part to the lack of behavioral expertise among the staff at the school for deaf students. I advocated for Jesse to be in a school with teachers and peers who signed fluently so that his language development would not be lost, but his behavior was difficult for the staff to handle, leading to the decision to split his time. Both of these mothers speak to the need for more integrated services for deaf plus learners. They too need strategies to address the communication, behavior, and learning challenges experienced by their children, but even more, they need a group of professionals from which to seek support. Given the prevalence of deaf plus children and their unique constellation of needs, it is imperative that deaf educators develop an understanding of evidence-based practices to address those needs, along with the skills necessary to implement such practices effectively. Professionals need not only apply evidence-based practices in home, school, and community contexts. They also need to support parents, family members, paraprofessionals, colleagues, and community members in the implementation of such practices. Given the lack of research-based or clinical attention placed on deaf plus learners to date, it will be important to look at established evidence-based practices for hearing children with developmental disabilities and make adjustments or modifications as necessary. 
Finally, the provision of home-based support to parents early on in the Deaf Plus learner's life will go a long way in promoting the development of Deaf Plus children while at the same time preventing the development of ongoing behavioral challenges. In upcoming tutorials in this series, I will be highlighting some common evidence-based strategies that can be used to support and teach Deaf Plus learners with a focus on improving communication skills, addressing problem behavior, and teaching effectively.